Okay, this is Ringwall Media in association with Will Ice Therapy, the main man, Dev Sarney. It's nice to see you and uh, a big week, Zhang versus Joyce. What's all the hype about? What's <laughs> you said that as you've literally handed me your new sponsor, Hype, the energy drink. Um, I, I probably will try it at, at some point. I'm more of a curiosity man myself. I thought you might be. <laughs> But um, yeah, look, a lot of hype. It's a it's a big big fight. It's a fight of consequence, right? This this is it. WBO interim heavyweight title on the line. The winner is the mandatory for the world title currently held by Alexander Usyk. Uh, for Joe Joyce, 38 years old, it means everything. For Zile Zhang, 40 years old, it means everything. There's a long way back for the loser. So it, look, it's all on the line. Will it be repeat? Will it be revenge? I can't wait to find out. We're going to talk about uh, the loser in a minute, but let's talk about the press conference first of all. There are a few naughty words coming over from the Zhang camp. Is that Mr. Zhang himself, or is that his uh, advisor making some fun? I love him. I love Kurt. Like He's Kurt, good, yeah. Like first time round, he was the one who, who was talking about like um, I bang everything, you know. And that I think the world collectively enjoyed the the notion of Zhile uh, Zhang potentially banging everything. You know, it was, it was good fun. It was good fun. But yeah, he said some good things this time as well, and. You know, all of that aside, that's all, you know, builds the fight and we have a good chat and we have a laugh, but it really, I can't stress enough how significant a fight this is. The heavyweight division is the one that everyone loves, the public, not just the boxing fans, not just sports fans, the public. They want to know who the heavyweight champion is. It's, it's the one, and this is the fight that has a bit of an impact on the heavyweight landscape. We could be looking at a future world heavyweight champion on Saturday night, and the status of that WBO interim title as well. We have seen previously, in previous years, WBO interim champions, certain circumstances might happen where they get upgraded to world champion. Adam Morley brought that up earlier as well, and they are treating this like a world title fight, and it's certainly a fight worthy of it. And, uh, you know, it's been very well received, this fight, but a lot of people were surprised that Joe activated the, uh, the rematch pause so quickly. Yeah, well, look, he, he wants it back, and it's... Uh, uh, as I've mentioned, he's 38 years old and you want the most direct route to a world title. You start taking little fights here and there, what, hey, what if you lose? What if you think you're taking a little sidestep here and it's an easier fight? It's an even longer way back. So he believes he can beat Zile Zhang. He believes he can make the adjustments and get the job done. He believes he'll be heavier this time. I think he will. You look, look, look at him. And uh, if you think you can win, you reactivate the, uh, the, the claws. You, you get it going. Is that Zhang shouting over there? I think it is, to be fair. Gareth. I think Gareth's speaking to him in, in Cantonese, by the way. Gareth talks to him in, in complete bullshit, to be fair. Oh, I see. I, I won't be... <laughs> Fluent in it. I won't be repeating that, but yeah. No, it's good. It's good. Um, but just talking about weight there, it looks like Zhang is actually coming in lighter and Joe's going to come in a lot heavier. We spoke to Adam and he said he's going to come in a lot heavier. Do you think there's almost a role reversal for this fight? I think they might be the same weight. It might be exactly the same way. I think that we could see something like that on the on the scales tomorrow. I'm very curious because Joe was what 250 something and Zhang was I think like 280 or high 270s. Uh, I don't know. They might be about the same because, as you say, Zhang does look a bit lighter. Yeah. Joe definitely looks heavier, and they might just. Well, that's an interesting thought. You come up with these for me. But then, yeah, just thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> rubbish mate just <laughs> hopefully they are look it'll be a nice little uh, story if they're the same weight it's all part of the fun isn't it <laughs> well, listen just very briefly we'll talk about uh, the undercard um and in particular pierce o'leary versus kane baker what a fight that is big bang mate you know people are talking about Gilles Zhang. there's another big bang he's at 140 pounds he bangs everything as well <laughs> well you're on one today aren't you i mean look he, he he bangs certain super lightweights on the chin and they tend to tend to fall down that that's what pierce o'leary does but step up fight uh, biggest test of his career kane gardner his stock is particularly high right now he has that win over connor walker who had then gone on to beat Cyrus Patterson, who's a Team GB guy, look, this, this is good. It's good company to be mixing in. And if uh, Pierce O'Leary is as good as we think he is, uh, he will come through this test with flying colours. But I'll tell you what, Kane Gardner is very much here to fight. He thinks that uh, Pierce hasn't had to dig deep, hasn't had to go to any sort of deep waters, whereas he has. He has those experiences. So uh, let's see. We know Kane quite well, and uh, he was saying, look, you know, I've not had the opportunities to go the traditional route, even though I wanted to. No one would fight him. He's had to take this now because it's his time, and, you know, he's looking to take him to a lot, a long way into that fight. I know he is, I know he is, and uh, look, we will find out on Saturday if Kane is able. 
And of course, yeah, I do get it. I'm just ignoring it because it was that bad. Sort of joke. Yeah. Um, Zach, it was great to see Zach back um, a year out. Didn't even know if he was coming back. Um, you know, sadly stopped in the in the uh, John Ryder fight, and it'll be really interesting to see how he does. It will be very interesting. Uh, I didn't know that, that he actually considered sort of jacking the whole thing in. Uh, I guess it was a horrendous experience for him. He, he was knocking on the door of a world title, and the winner of that fight did indeed go on to fight Canelo Alvarez. So he was, uh, it, it was here, it was this close to changing his life. And uh, yeah, look, a hand injury meant that he pulled out of the fight uh, after four rounds. And he's got it all to prove right now. So let's see, great to see him back. I, I like that he's talking about campaigning at two weights potentially, looking for the biggest and best fights at super middle and also light heavyweight. I like the idea of him calling that Anthony Yard as well. It could be a fun fight at some point. Um, yeah, good to have him back. And uh, just one more before we let you go. Uh, Raven Chapman had a, a very, very good win at York Hall a little while ago um, in about 46 degrees, which no one was expecting, by the way. I think even Dennis McCann was mentioning, you know, that was very hot. And, you know, he, he, there's obviously talk of Dennis coming back, I think, in December and against, against Baluta again. Um, you know, Raven, though, of course, she's got possible an interim world, world title to go for. I mean, you're telling me. I mean, I don't, look, I, I, Frank confirmed it. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Raven Chapman. You talk about how hot it was in York Hall. Well, she brings the heat. She is a nightmare to fight. And uh, look, if you, sh she, she wants a bit of Amanda Serrano at some point. If you are a featherweight uh, and you are a female and you want to fight for a world title, she's kind of in your way, Amanda Serrano. So she's got an eye on her, and she, it sounds like she was on a bit of a promise with Amanda Serrano to one day fight her. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to see her next move. Uh, and maybe it is this interim title fight. You said Frank's confirmed it. So, yeah. so great. She is edging closer and closer. And she's a real problem for any female featherweight in the world. Well, we're hoping that that fight's going to be in December alongside Dennis. Um, be good to see the pair of them back out. And, uh, you know, they, that was a good night at your call, wasn't it? Very hot, as, as you say, mate. I was, uh, I was the ring announcer that night. I was in a three-piece suit. And, honestly... The way the sweat trickled down my back was quite disgusting, if I'm honest with you, mate. You said that in interview afterwards. <laughs> Awful. I'll keep thinking back to it as well. But, yeah, horrible night, great fights. <laughs> Listen, let's go back to Joyce Zhang. Like a prediction from you, sir. Expect fireworks. Look, I, honestly, right now I don't actually know. I, I, I think I'll, I'll have an idea after the first round. I'm so intrigued as to how many lessons Joe Joyce has learnt from the first fight. I'm intrigued as to what Zhang's strength and conditioning changes have, uh, have led to. I, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. Well, I think Joyce is going to go at him quick. Well, look, Zhang got quite a fast start last time. Joyce normally starts a bit slow. Maybe he does need to start quicker. Well, listen, thanks for sitting on the fence. We really appreciate that. Dev, as always, great to see you up here. Great press conference, and uh, we look forward to seeing what happens on Saturday. Tune in, TNT Sports in the UK, ESPN Plus in the States, you see it. Nice one, mate, thank you.